Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. Today's video we're gonna cover on, it has to do with uh, school owners and whether or not they should have a master. Now first of all, what is Kama Jiu Jitsu? We are the school, we have three locations and we are the school run by Master Dave Kama, who is one of the Dirty Dozen, one of the first 12 to receive a Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt and he got his from Grandmaster Hicks and Gracie himself. Uh, we have three locations, one in Southern California in Irvine, that is Kama Jiu Jitsu Irvine. We also have one in Dallas Fort Worth area in Flower Mound, that would be Kama Jiu Jitsu Dallas Fort Worth, and our last one is in the city of Austin, Kama Jiu Jitsu Austin, Texas. Come visit us when you get a chance. Also, you can visit us online at kamajujitsuonline.com where you can see our curriculum, you can see our lessons, uh, lesson plans, and you can see videos that are put up by Master Dave Kama himself. Uh, probably between two and 300 videos by now, if not more. And we are currently online and we are, by the time you see this, we should have our app up and running. From what I understand, we, we have finished the beta testing and we are up and running on the Google Play Store and we are about to be put onto the, uh, the App Store for you iPhone people. So be sure to check in on the App Store now and again to see if you can, uh, you can get on. Uh, it's a powerful, uh, powerful mobile app and I think you guys will really like it. Anyway, on to the subject at hand. If you're a school owner, should you have a master? That is a question that only you can answer, but let me give you some things to think about when considering whether or not you should be uh, uh, affiliated under a master. Number one is, are you a black belt? If you are not, then you need to be. But make sure that the person you affiliate under is not for a business reason, perhaps, but it's for uh, the fact that you're looking to learn that person's jujitsu. Because if you haven't noticed already, watching all these videos that we put out here at Kama Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu has grown so differently over the years. Meaning, one school may have one style of Jiu Jitsu and another school right down the street will have another style of Jiu Jitsu. If you're still learning and you're not a black belt yet, choose the black belt you want to be, you want to call your master and study under that particular person and earn your black belt no matter how long it takes. You may not ever earn your black belt, I'm sad to say it, but walk into this journey with a master you choose. And the reason why this is so important is because if you find out or you realize you don't like this master, you're gonna have to find another one. So who is supposed to be teaching you if that master doesn't teach you? Who has that same style of jujitsu that you want to do that your master currently does? Make sure you know that. Make sure you know who the masters are that teach that type of jiu-jitsu or that brand of jiu-jitsu, that style of jiu-jitsu that you want to do. Because if you don't have that, then it may be tough. Now, why would you want a master? Because it kind of lends to your legitimacy. If you're a self-taught jiu-jitsu guy, anybody who wants to learn a particular style, they're not going to come to you. Because you have, in this case, you may be phenomenally good, but you don't have any legitimacy. So then you need to affiliate under somebody. So let's say you are a sport player and you're a phenomenally good one, but you don't have a master. So what you're going to do, you decide you want to affiliate under a master. But this master has a completely different jiu-jitsu. His is a self-defense jiu-jitsu. And it's not the sport stuff. So what you do and what he do are two totally different things. Why would you do that? Right? It doesn't make any sense. So there are some people who I've seen gone through multiple affiliations. They had, they were one, they were, I'm thinking of one, uh, one offhand, uh, got his brown belt from one master. And then while he was a brown belt, trained under a different master, got his black belt, and was under him for a little while and then ended up going with another master who's a totally different style of jiu-jitsu and then went again to another master, yet another master uh, who's got a totally different style of jiu-jitsu. So what does that do for your students? You know, every time, you know, let's say you're teaching something a certain way, you say, okay, no, do it this way, do it this way, do all this this way and you look at this overall concept in mind with regard to jiu-jitsu and then you go and affiliate under a different master and this new master comes in and says, no, I need you to do it this way, this way, this way, this way. What are you going to do? 
right? You, you've been teaching your students one way, you can tell your, your master now, oh, well, it's actually, uh, we should do it his way now because he's the master we're under now. Okay, so all these years that your students have been learning under you under one master, they're now going to have to learn another style completely to, to cater to this new master. And let's say two years from now you realize you don't like this master, he's, he's a jerk, right? He's horrible to do business with. So you go and find another master who has yet a third style that you're going to have to do. You can kind of see where this, this can go wrong pretty quickly. So you don't want to do that. So try to find somebody as a master that you get along with and that you know that you can have a business relationship for a period of time because you're, he's going to be teaching you his art and you're going to be perpetuating his art because you've chosen to affiliate under somebody, which means you've chosen to perpetuate his name in jiu-jitsu. You're, you're kind of riding the coattails, so to speak, right? It's a mutually beneficial relationship. He's, he's the master. You're going to pay him money to use his name. At the same time, you're going to ride his coattails. What good does it make? if you ride his coattails and you don't do his jujitsu. I've been to a studio and this was a studio where all the founding members, all the founding black belts were black belts under one uh, pretty famous master. And I know how that master trains. I know who taught that master. And I go to this school. The master's no longer there. Master's moved on somewhere else. And the two black belts that I meet in there have jujitsu styles that are nothing like the master. You know, I went there because I wanted to train under, I wanted, you know, I was visiting and I wanted to, to do the jujitsu under that master. I wanted to see what it was like. And these guys are doing inverted stuff and and, and, and a lot of, you know, De La Hivas and stuff that, that is more the modern jujitsu and not the old school jujitsu that I was expecting to see. So for them, the affiliation doesn't really work. It, it's, you know, I actually sent a family member to go train there. And when that family member came to visit me, I'm like, okay, you should know this and this and this. Nope. Didn't know how to do any of it. None of the self-defense curriculum um, he knew, knew zip. And this is from a school that professes to be a self-defense school. So if you're going to have an affiliation, my contention is to at least have an affiliation with someone that you're comfortable uh, carrying their water for, right? You know, do their style of jujitsu. And also, another reason why you want an affiliation is so that you can go through the ranks, if that's really what you want. Now, you could simply be a federation black belt, right? IBJJF federation, and let the federation give you your, uh, your ranking upgrades, uh, your promotions, because it's all by time once you hit black belt. Or if you don't want to go that route, then you know you're going to need a master to, to go and do it for you. You know, I know one uh, jujitsu black belt who wasn't a black belt, uh, lost, uh, had a disagreement with his master at the time, and then called another famous master and said, "Let me be your affiliate." Well, they were two different styles of jujitsu. Number one, and number two is he ended up buying his black belt from that second one. Because it made, made business sense for him to be not a brown belt, but a black belt. Even though there are a lot of people that would question his being a black belt, right? But for business sense, it, it made sense. Now, here's the thing. That master, I guess, had to be okay with, uh, with doing that because he since, he since promoted him multiple times. Now, they, from what I understand, they no longer have a business relationship now. Uh, but this particular black belt goes and touts that he's a black belt under this master. So I don't think, uh, you know, the, I think the relationship might have ended up uneven in that case to where the master got the short end of it. But, you know, you, you breed what you sow, right? So as you, as a, as a school owner, do you, need, do you need to have one? If you're famous, if your name is Gracie, you don't need one, obviously. If you're a, a world champion, uh, you probably don't better to just let the federation uh, run your promotions and record your promotions. If you're, if you've got some notoriety, probably don't need to have it. You know, and, and then lastly, if you don't care about stripes on your black belt, right, then no big deal, right? Dave Kama, he went with no degrees on his black belt from 1996 when he received it all the way through, I want to say 2008, 2009. 
something like that. Not a single stripe on there, and then boom, you got two, and then you got two more, and then you got one more. Um, he just didn't care. I mean, does he does he wear them once he's received them? Of course. But did he care when he didn't receive them? No. It was one of those things where if Hickson gave them to him, Hickson gave them. You know, he knew that Hickson didn't think of him as, as a lesser black belt by not giving him stripes or a promotion, right? I mean, he's Dave Conlon, right? But if you're if you're not if you don't have a pedigree like that, then yeah, you might want to get one. It it it, it could only help your business. But you know, choose your master correctly because you're going to be hitching up your wagon to that particular person for a while. And once you do, I guess you could say the expression is milk it for all it's worth, right? Use. Um, Use your affiliation and get time with your master. Learn their style. Learn how they run the business. Learn what their values are. Uh, learn what they, they value in jiu-jitsu as far as the reason why they're doing it. And then, and then see if that aligns with your values. And if it does, project it to your students. It, it can only help them. You know, it, you know this jiu-jitsu is a journey, and it's a journey that changes lives. And you want to make sure that you give your students a good foundation uh, for which to learn it. But the only way to do it is to make sure you have a solid foundation yourself. Make sure you affiliate well. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Hopefully this worked out for you. Please like and subscribe. Take care now. Happy training. Bye now.